PC Code Team City, welcome to another tech video. This time we're going to get Papa's engine nicely built, all re made, re engineered, re skimmed, re shimmed, re bored, re honed, all those kind of words you see. Join us. We're in Preston. Turn left onto North Road, A6, then turn right onto Sedgwick Street. Yeah, I see why, Alexa, I see why. Andy will kill me for this one. Right. Take the next right onto Sedgwick Street. Okay. Alexa is navigating us to Nuttalls, the old school engine rebuilders. They've been in the business years and years and years. And they're still doing good with a, a junction here with a bit of a, a jam up. Okay. Alexa guiding us to the. Um... In 200 yards, turn right onto St. Paul's Road. Guiding us to the motorway, we're going to be hitting the M61 for Blackburn, which is where Nuttalls are. And they build engines old school style. Been doing it, as I said, for years. And a Kent Crossflow, which is what's in the boot. Of Turn right onto St. Paul's Road. What's in the boot of Tina G? I know I've got an idea. Why not just turn the volume down when you're talking? So in Tina G in the boot is the engine block and the head out of Papa's Crossflow engine. So we take it to get rebuilt, folks. And we were recommending the pulse. Spoke to the guy on the phone. Sounds great. <coughs> so let's let's get him in. We're going to be joining you shortly on the motorway. I'm just navigating my way around Preston. In a quarter of a mile, at the roundabout, take the second exit onto London Way, A6. We'll be uh, smacking hammer down shortly. Full approval from Mr. Backtrack. We'll smack that hammer down and get ourselves to this engine place, engine rebuilder's place. And guess what? We may even call in at Dave's yard. I've got a wheel in the back. I'm going to try and do a bit of a, a one-two. Buckle my shoe because I've got three wheels for Papa, three wheels on the wagon, which take the chrome tr centre trims. These are the L-spec wheels, the lower spec wheels, not your Ross dials, not your dartboards or sport wheels. These are the, just the, the basic Cortina wheel. And I had three. One got butchered when we were doing Ruby, I think. I uh, don't it got used for knocking off a half shaft or something. Anyway, the little newster, a friend of mine down in Essex, say, gave me a wheel which looks the same, but it doesn't have the little nibs to hold on the centre caps. It must have been from Mark IV or Mark V Cortina. So, Dave is selling a set of five wheels that we want. We don't want them all, we only want one. So I swap him this wheel without the nibs and he can mix it up and no one's going to notice when he sells his set. They could always use it as the spare. The spare doesn't need it. Oh well, there you go. It's a bit of a, a one-two trial at Dave's Dave's yard in Blackburn. That's Dave there, the butcher, the butcher of Mayfair. He's cruel when it comes to Mark III Cortinas. He doesn't hesitate on slicing through a knife through, a hot knife through butter, Dave goes, chopping them Mark III Cortinas without a care in the world not a shred of guilt, not an ounce of sentience in his body, just ruthless and monster. Dave, you're a monster. It's time to give you everybody, it's time to give everybody what they want. That's the hammer down. Uh oh, we've got the boys in blue waiting to pounce. Just sat there waiting for his prey. Motorway police then, just ANPRing anyone they can. Cleaning up the streets, those naughty motorists. Cleaning up the streets. The, uh, the, the, the gendarmes of the M61, no doubt uh, waiting to get a chunk out of Dave when he chops a car up. But for now, as promised, the hammer goes down. Let's just wait till we get one more lane. 
gendarmes just distant memories, meaningless specks on the horizon in the distance as Tina G called Tina City open the taps and let that amber nectar flow through that root beer that double espresso that M65 was I saying M61? Lane Hogger out of the way time to open her up no problem. This is Darwin now, folks. Quite a, a northern town, a town that time forgot. A bit of a mill town, another pub gone on the left there. Coming up slow, shortly approaching Darwin town centre. Sat up once a half mile left turn. Quite a lot of shutdown. The Godfather hopefully is still in business. Nice uh, tasty fish and chips later on. Will go down nice. Mmm. 0.4 miles for our left turn. Climbing the short Darwin Hill. Go. Will there be any multi story car parks? I believe there was an abandoned car park here. Possibly. Some breaking through the leaden skies, chucking down the odd scattered shower. Darwin Leisure Centre, the place surely to be on a, a weekend. Darwin Leisure Centre, then. I don't know if that's been rebuilt. It looks yeah, that's that's spanking new. Look at that. Whoa. That's spanking. Nice job there. What? Guy trying to break into a pub there. He's retrieving something. It's all going on. A, a bag of sort of looks like a bag of flour. A bag of flour be so just you just leave it. Through we go. I thought it was a burned out church and it's not, it's just the shape of it. This is the, the epicenter then of Darwin. Roosters, chicken and pizza, waffles, grill, post office there. It's got it, it's got it all. A booming night out must be had in Darwin. It looks a really lovely town for a busting night out. But before we go for our big night out and big booze up, Jay Nuttall and Co, engine specialist, we're rolling into town. This is old school. I just hope I can get back out of here. Once we've driven in, it's a, it's a reverse out job this for sure. Look at this. Old school paint on them doors. The whole thing. If they can't fix it here, they can't fix it anywhere. This is it. We should have reversed in, to be fair. Never mind. We've arrived doesn't get more old school than this and here they are oh the chef's coming for he's not have his knife sharp the chef from local pub there wow exhaust is blowing as well and notice center box I've just done the back box now the middle box is gone never rains well it pours let's get serious This is Jay Nuttall and Co. Engineering. Right, this is tricky. Yeah, get your back quarter chopped off here. Yeah, okay though. Try it off. device is connected us successfully.
continue on Wally Road for one mile. What's on that phone that's not outside here, eh? Hey, what's in that stupid fucking brick that you're fucking staring at all fucking day that's not fucking out here? Unbelievable. Addicted. It's an epidemic. It's a disease. It's an, it's an exodus of common sense. Pathetic. It's a it's a an endorphin reinforcing feedback loop of thumbs up and chats and like of mostly nothing. You're not doing anything creative on there. You're just browsing, nonchalant browsing, just just for no reason other than to get a quick fix. It won't last more than 30 seconds before you've got to look at that screen again. I bet you, I bet you put it down. You can't put it down for more than one minute for the either the fucking thing lights up or you have to go and scroll it and wake it up because you, you, it's been too long for your next fix. Unbelievable. Unbe worst thing ever invented. Unbelievable social media killing society, destroying conversations. No one talks or looks at each other anymore. Has to have that brick in the way. Let's go for a meal. But don't make sure you bring the brick. Make sure you bring the brick to work. It's unbelievable. The kids I feel sorry for. They've known ever known anything. That's it. Step out. Throw yourself into the road. What are we gonna do about found floors? Never survive. Surely this is it. The end. Magic. Mac. Get to the chopper, Mark! No one can say Mark like Arnold can. Do you know what I'm looking forward to soon? The sun-kissed streets of Great Harwood. A mixture of summery, scattered showers, cooling rain on hot tarmac with Dalek lime ice lollies i'm sure they had a chocolate center how about a bigfoot lolly how about your rocket lolly how about hundreds and thousands how about rosy apples how about lime drops or whatever they were called yeah black jacks half a penny gobstoppers lots up choked to death but those knee grazed scuffed chin sun-kissed 1970s pavements the tarmac just about to melt in a quarter of a mile turn left onto Hindburn Road don't interrupt my poetry I'm thinking that what about artificial intelligence oh no we've not even touched upon our artificial intelligence you just don't know what's coming you know i mean they say people are living on the sun you know i mean hey look i'm open-minded but take I, the next left onto hindburn road <laughs> i'm open-minded but people living on the sun is really stretching it for me area 51 it's possible you know anti-gravity uh, device it's possible um, you know, parallel universe, wormholes, time travels, UFOs that are us coming back. Yeah, okay, all possible. We can't prove. Only our physics doesn't mean anything. Is that that's our physics? But people living on the sun, <laughs> living on the sun. Do you, do you know how hot it hot it is on the sun? It's hotter than the middle of a McDonald's apple pie crumble. That's hot. Wow, living on the sun. Oh my god. I, I'd have to try and convince you. I would have to try and convince you that it's possible to, to, to live on the sun, okay? So they've come up with this kind of like Fermos flask guy. In a quarter of a mile, turn left. She's annoying. They've come up with this Fermos flask idea. The theory is, is it, it, it's, it's an anti gravity device in a kind of like layered like a thermos flask is like a vacuum between it, this sort of reflective glass it's not glass and the anti-gravity device creating a force field between the, the layers which basically because sun's radiation it's sort of anti-radiation it actually doesn't get hot so basically the idea is you project that with yourself in it right into the middle of the sun and you kind of like live inside the sun but i don't know where you go for a leak 
Bon, vous voyez. Approaching Great Harwood now. Stand by. All switches down, strobes on, landing gear down. Cabin crew to jump seats, please. Can we smell any railways around here? Yeah. Come on, Dave, what have you got for us? Nick me a wheel, Dave. Way to go, Dave! Coming up to the town centre. Join us. Someone said to me, Oh, you, you're looking back at the camera. It's bad, it's frightening. And you got the kids in the back and you go, Shut up! You know, how far did you go? MA motor accessories, old school, sun faded goodies in the window, looks like it's shut down. Whoa, check that old school motor factor. Sorry about my jacket being in the way. I think we're on Dave's Road. We are. Look out for a left turn coming up soon. Yes, definitely. This is it. You may as well stay on. Dave's Road is up here, Great Meadow Street. Clayton Street. It's a nice high street actually. Great old, it's also very nice. Coming up now, Great Meadow Street, here we go. And the sun came out. You see, you see there you go. Look at there's the sun kissed streets I was telling you about. Bang on. Beat C Continue City. Arriving now at our final little trip and then we'll get back in back to the workshop. Let's go see Dave. See what's changed around here. Is that the Bullen van? That could be the Bullen mobile. It's the Bullen mobile. It's the Bullen mobile. <laughs> Bullen's in, and there's some goodies to look at. Here we go. I'm trying to park in front of the gates. Don't know. Oh no, I can park there. We're okay. We're good for parking. Alan Bullen in then. Have you any, have you any scrap, scrap metal for that wheel of the ring here, all right? What have you got for me there? What have you got? Let's go see the boys. In a sec. Oh, forgot to say, we've hit the jackpot. Hey, that's my box. Hold on, Alan. There's my wheel. That's just what I needed. He had an odd set, and his, his Dave's odd wheel was the wheel that I need, and my odd wheel is the wheel he needs. Result, result, result on the wheel. Let's have a look around the yard. We always have a boogie around Dave's yard. Dave's in Malta, leaving Mr. Bullen to run the show. You've seen this yard plenty of times before. Really new. This thing's never made it out. One for the, one for the nut, the light ace. This is just your local scrap wagon. The transit there, never going to make it out. And then Death Alley. There's nothing going on in this corner. Wow, that's a bit of a beast. But yeah, uh, no Cortinas in. A big, big pile of wheels. You couldn't find a Cortina wheel there. Looking in the wrong place. There's another one. No, it's not. But I've got the one I need. Just going to see if we can find the radiator that I've got to buy back. So Dave a radiator. <laughs> I need to buy it back now. I'm putting the crossflow back in Papa. I need the crossflow radiator. Go and get it. I've seen a sec. Okay, we've got what we needed. We've got a wheel. 
I even got a center box, center exhaust box, because this one I can hear it's just starting to go. So I've got a new old one off the back of the truck there. You left it outside, but it should be okay. So we've got that, got the wheel, and head back. Engine's been dropped off, so we shall now start cleaning up the engine bits. So we're gonna go back to the workshop, lay all the engine bits out, and we can see what we've got. Alan's got some pistons, that's Alan Bullen, the Bullen Mobile. He's got some pistons, so if I can tell the engineering shop what size to do the bore, possibly we could use these brand new pistons that he's got. It's got possibilities, all of this has. And um, really it's a question now of getting stuff ready so it's all nice and clean. I'll go back on the road, see you back at base. Okay, back in the workshop after dropping the engine off, of course, a little bit of a road trip there. Hope you enjoyed Dave's yard as well. Always like to pop into Dave's yard. So I'm back at the workshop, clean bench, and a diagram of the engine itself so I can familiarise myself with any parts. And the plan today is to make a list of any missing parts and jobs to be done on this engine. We want to do a complete inventory of everything. Okay, so we want to have it so that we've got every part that might need pre-ordering in the post and ready to go. To do that, uh, let's turn the music down. To do that, we need to obviously familiarise ourselves with this. I definitely know I'm going to need a fan because the blade broke. We've got all these parts here, other than the crank pistons the, the block and the head because they're away the rest of the bits are in the box down on the floor I'll show you that in a sec and we're gonna clean everything up that's the first job clean everything up and lay everything out on the floor I've got a blanket down uh, a bit of a dolly parton down on the floor and then a box full of bits I'll take you over to that in a sec so there it is our cross flow Exploded diagram of the cross flow. All sorts of stuff I don't understand, but I'm sure I will. Going to be needing, let's write the first thing down whilst they come to mind because you might forget. So at least I'm going to need an AccuSpark uh, unit to convert the to convert to electric ignition. We're going to need a coil because that one was knackered. Oh, it didn't look good. It's best to get a new uh, coil. Spark plugs, because these are different than the ones I carry, because I'm always on Pinto. So there's at least three items straight away. We can start with this kind of stuff. That's how we're going to do it. But it's a cleaning mission first. Let's get all the parts down and make sure nothing's missing. We can pick to work on this bench here if we want. There's a drain hole here. Uh, this is the Clark bench. I'll move you back. And you get this little catch tray. Which has got some tools in it at the moment. It's got my brake bleeding kit in there because that tends to, when you're using your uh, fluid extractors, there's a, the uh, syringe pump and my oil pump and my brake bleeding stuff tends to slightly dribble after, even though you clean it all out. It's nice to keep it in that tray. But that tray collects the cleaning fluid from there you know the score it's that type of engine um, bench and then behind you coming across now spin you around we've got blanket and the first of the parts so it's gloves on for the first mission I've got um, a cassette player in the moment with stylistics on I'm not going to put it on whilst I'm recording, of course, the usual, usual. 
copyrights. I mean, it doesn't really matter anymore about <coughs> monetizing the channel, I suppose. But we will leave it on monetized. Patreon support most of this. YouTube pays paltry, as you know. Sometimes it's better just to have some videos non monetized just to get people in with the music. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and we're going to start looking at what we've got. Need that just yet. So that's our air cleaner. Looks complete. We can clean that. So the engine was jet washed down, but I've gone over these parts again. We're gonna to need to order a fan belt. There's another thing that's probably not that's not for this car. I'll just, I'll just, uh, it looks like it's all complete, but I'll definitely be wanting to look at that. That feels well, that's very stiff. So that needs a little bit of a service. There's an O-ring seal there. That probably need replacing. New leads. Let's write the leads down. It's a Fomoco distributor. It's a genuine article, but it needs cleaning up. We're not concoursing anything up. It's just going to be clean and usable. I just see if there's any play in that. Doesn't there's no play down at the bottom. You can get play in these. We'll have a look at that. Inlet manifold. Okay, so that's got a broken water connector that needs extracting out. That's broke off and we need to get one of those. It's a water outlet. I think they're reasonably rare those. So we have to get out my and I, I think. Yeah, if it's anything like Pinto, trying to extract these out of here can be tricky. I think you have to grip back in the vice and rotate the entire thing on it, because these tend to fuse in, at least they do on Pintos. That carburetor, I'm wondering if that nice one I've got, that uh, crossflow one, the uh, overhead cam one, will fit this, because that carb's good. Not that this one won't be, but it's... Uh, could at least need to take in a part. I'm, sure, I'm not so sure these are the unreliable carbs. I don't know. It's a 71 WVB. It's not the Solex one. I know they were really bad. Anyway, we've got that oil pump. Just needs cleaning up and then we'll check it. I believe these are pretty reliable. Sounds okay, but it doesn't mean anything. Alternate, I don't know about. Again, these are reasonably cheap. I can check some basics on it. The rectifier pack, bearing. We'll have to see. Rocker cover, it's clean. Anything snapped off, somebody's welded a bracket onto it there. It's not very good welding. Don't like that. We need a gasket set. Fuel pump, one of those glass bolt types, quite like that. We'll inspect that and see how it is. Hard to tell. Doesn't feel like there's any action on that. That feels, feels suspect at the moment. Alternate bracket, I think. Water pumps, we're winning one of them, that's corroded off the end, look. Doesn't feel good either. That's gone, so water pumps definitely needed. Catch can, a new PCV valve we'll get for that. Accelerator cable and brackets, cable looks good actually. Now he's running for some reason. Timing cover or one of the covers. No, here's, here's the timing cover. That'll need a seal there to see what size that is. I wonder if it's similar on a Pinto because if it is, I've got those. I definitely, that definitely needs to clean up. A couple of pulleys, an alternator bracket. Just clean the pulleys up. Painted pickup pipe to be cleaned. 
Again, nothing to do to it, except clean it. And dust cover sandwich plate. That's it for now. Oh, the air filter bracket. So there's the parts laid out. I've got probably a few other bits as well. And uh, that need digging out, but there you go for now. Stop recording. Okay, first item here. I've got a little bit of nerd to degreaser. I use this stuff, it's citrus based stuff I like. And I've got this box which doesn't have drain holes in it, so it's going to catch and reduce the mess. It's going to catch the fluid. Stiff brush, I use a seam sealer brush now. I uh, really should have glasses on. Like I've got my reading glasses, or uh, well my, you know, my glasses. I should have clear specs on too, because this could flip and burn your eye. There isn't really much mug on this. I just want to make it so that everything that I handle is clean. It's in very good order, this. Uh, there's no rust on the trumpet here to pick up. In the UK, they certainly rust off their found pintos. This one's good. I think this also got heavily jet washed. I think I'm on my earlier pack of videos, certainly a lot of the engine got jet washed down. So the lion's share of all the muck was taken off. So we're really just cleaning up the last bits here. I'm going to get the air compressor in as well and blow these back after. It's currently in the house. Used to spring clean in the compressor in the house and getting dumped, dusting off cobwebs. Well, air filter. Housing. Air filter housing. So, let's see how it works. System. I shall wipe that down. Not a lot to do to that. Pretty good, obviously, it will begin the new air cleaner element inside it. This is all we're doing. The tricky bits, of course, in these corners. They'll help with this later on. I think that's it for that. Yeah, I'll blast that out after. That's in good order, no damage on that or burn marks on it. It's not falling off and landed on the manifold or anything like this. Quite a nice air cleaner there. Original. For the engine, 71 code on it, forward stamped, replacement cartridge numbers written on, it's a Fram as well, F-A-R-M, Fram with the Ford logo, don't actually see a 71 code, unusual, and usually there's always something stamped on there, it's a Fram, this is what you want. Right, that's okay. The so next part is something really mucky. This, we might not go on the bench. I know that this uh, tub's black, it might have come out for you at home as well on the camera. I'll increase the, the uh, contrast, not the contrast, I'll increase the, the brightness when I edit it in case this is too dark. Not much on this. Either this may have been originally painted black, I don't know, at the time in cover casing. There is muck on it, it's going to need a bit more of an aggressive clean. Some of this is baked on, fluid may or may not get it. Just taking it off there, yeah, there it goes, breaking it down. I shall now work through all these bits and come back to you 
when we're done cleaning off the crud and then we'll inspect each part like this is a uh, fuel pump and see what we need off eBay to order some parts will be working and some will be seized we'll have to see PC then continuing to clean down all these individual parts I'll cut to you when they're laid out all clean no point filming this particular bit it's just a lot of brushing as I said because we jet washed uh, the engine quite heavily before I even started to look at it this is just a nice finishing off bit of work there's no heavy mud oil or build up on these because the jet washer took a lot of it off it is on the earlier video that it's outside getting jet washed completely and that's helped a bit of forward planning paid off of course the pinto that's in was only temporary to get the car mobile I'll have to change it again but it got us what we wanted which was to move the car about stylistics clicking up there Okay, get the idea. I'll give you an update shortly. And we've been brushing down, degreasing, and now on our final stages. I've now got steam cleaner on. This is a little caster steam cleaner. It's just going to take the water soluble degreaser off and catch any other little bits. So, there I go. Carefully oil pump. I don't want the water in the oil pump. beneficial. I say there's always some bits you miss. This just gets the rest of it.
It's certainly going to be a lot easier to handle now and nice and clean. Soon dry down, the sump's done. Most of the parts are done there, really. I'll have that sandwich plate just a quick blast. A double catch can. Double catch can. This not, doesn't take much. Brackets, but I don't really need it. Alternate a bracket. Okay, making a bit more of a parts list. Quite a few things, 21 items all together there. Adding them up as we go along. This is now clean, this is the fuel filter, so I'm gonna see fuel filter and pump. It sounds like it's working, pressing it on the bench. We do get action this way, actually. Can you hear that? So that is attempting, I see what type of fuel filter they use. Looks like it's in the middle. Whether you can get that, it's another matter. It might be serviceable. I'm not sure how this bowl can go. Whoa! Sheesh. There's some rust in there, folks. Look at that. Yeah, it's just like debris. Lots of it. I need to dump that, vac that up, actually. Let's have a look. So we've got a seal. Whoops, that was uh, Henry's lead catching a tripod there. Gasket there, that looks in good order actually. Expect all that to crumble away, that's that's pretty good. And what have we got here? So I looked in the book and there isn't any servicing info. It looks clean, it's actually completely clean. So I'd have to just blow that out. I'm gonna, we need to blast this out, clean it up. It might just be straight on working. So that's that's that. I just want to clean up. Filters are intact. Do we open it up and have a look inside, or we leave it as it is? I don't know what to do. There's a gasket all the way round. I think with this one, probably what we'll do: leave it as as it is. Keep a close eye on it. And because um, then filters are good, I think that just pops off that top filter. Yeah, it's serviceable. So you can clean that and run it yourself and it's got a sight glass. So that's quite nice. We might be okay with that. Could have been replaced on the car. So we'll put that to one side. That item will leave till the engine till the engine's in and we'll say, right, we need to look at it. It's got the barbs for the fuel hose. So that's the that's the fuel pump. Place that to one side. Next we've got a distributor. I 
and this has had some wire wrapped around it there and the VAC advance diaphragm's missing so we're going to need one of them so I don't know what type it would have but in order to keep this if we want to keep this it's a genuine deal from OCO and there's its code that code matches the weights and stuff it is stiff but we could easily get some three and one on that and we'll see if it's not the point heel that's making it stiff no it is a bit stiff on the bearing that but it's been is that play i'm trying to see if there's play in that there is a bit You can get completely new distributors. I think that should be okay. So it just needs a VAC advance unit on it. Take that off that wire, and then the uh, the arm, the operating arm, goes through and picks up and moves the plate. It looks like they're locked in position. Someone soldered them up there. Well, I think they have. Look at this. Someone has locked. You see, this is the thing. They probably couldn't get the parts over there. I don't think that's factory. Because this should move this plate to advance your timing. I think someone has soldered that up. It's because they've lost the vac diaphragm and it's been wobbling about. So, yeah, I'll have to break that solder and see where it's burnt it. So it is, it is aftermarket. I don't know if that will go. We're not going to be using manual points anymore. So I'll be taking these off. We don't need them. So that off and then we're going to have to melt this. You can get the points from AccuSpark, the electronic kits, well worth it. Capacitor there for the points, condenser, remove that, we don't need that. So yeah, that plate would now move and because they've soldered it, we're stuck. See if this will break it. Then if they're brazed, they'll sold it. They could have braced it. Doesn't look like solder. Could be bleeding welded. It's too shiny for weld. It's not the right colour for braze either. It's not solder. Solder would never held it really very well. What have they used there? Well, we could dremel that off. What a mess. I'll have, to, I'll have to cut this off. I could snap it and file it back. If I take this uh, circle off here, I should be able to start levering the plate up and pivot it on there and snap it. That's one option. I won't do any harm to take this plate up. I don't want to bend the plate. Hacksaw is another way. I think I'm going to go in with a hacksaw blade side on. Take this off. Be right back. Stop recording. It's proving tricky with a hacksaw. Going in with a crocky. Thank you. 
I'll tell you what, it's naughty that. That really is naughty. It's got tough stuff, whatever they've done there. It's weld, I think. I really do think it's weld. They've welded it. That's naughty. Say what, hacksaw in it now. Crack sand that took a little bit off the edge, gave me a start, a flat edge to start to. And finish off with this blade. That gets well. That's something jammed in there real tight. Oh, just trying to grip it. I could do the bench vice to be fair. I haven't got one. I've got one outside on an RSJ, but no bench vice. I've seen this before. It's a new one on me. Probably nearly through now. How much weld? Whew. Probably there now. Jeez. Come on. Like there's nothing holding it, just a little tiny bit, I can just see it. Oh, Jesus, it's tight on the hands. Surely that's good, oh God. I don't want to bend anything, it's definitely not supposed to be there. No way that's meant to be welded. Yeah, quite rude that was. Don't lose that little plastic bush. I have to clean this up now because it's I've weld all over it. And a weight to it. Oh no, there's his wire. Cheeky bugger, look. Right, so that's the weld on it. have these little standoff clips there's two of them one goes in there that's it for that bit take this off I think it catches it but that will always have a permanent reminder that it was welded that one right so that's that we can take this lid off and just check the weights I hope they've not messed around with the weights as well they have fly weights in them let's get some three in one oil on the shaft bearing if indeed that's the way to do it I've never took a dizzy apart before I don't think but uh, stay on with me and we'll have a look. See what's underneath here. Should be the fly weights. Don't lose that spring either. Should be this cover off now. You should see some bobbin weights inside. Ooh, it's mucky in there, look at that. 
you know, there's all the weights and it looks all a bit sticky so this wants a good clean up and there's where they've wired that could have thought probably to the um, the vax fallen off or punctured everything else made a rubber over there broke and it was probably running rough so they've we've wired it up on full advance probably we'll get that fixed just underneath the plate I'm trying to think where it fits now but there is this should be this should pick up yeah there is where the arm fits on for the weight for the back these themselves turn they are turning and that creates an advance I'm not quite sure how it does that just wants cleaning up though I don't know if it moves the plate or what how it does it I'll have to look on an exploded diagram just to see how this moves the points plate. I would have thought it had something that connects it to it, but it wouldn't be able to because the whole thing spins. So I don't know how that works. Let's clean it up anyway. Put some grease. Okay, got most of the grease out. Just finishing off with this brake and clutch cleaning works. So they go. They go. Right. That's off. I'll put it back together. I've worked out how it does it. This part here is separate from the main shaft. In other words, these are two items in my hand. Top is separate from the bottom. So there's a little bit of play in the shaft. And that's what allows it to advance. So not only does the plate move this way, but the whole base itself, the actual rotor arm advances on the weights. It does it in two ways. I'll re-grease this now. Okay, that's cleaned up. Three and one down on the shaft. And then I don't know where they put the grease, but I'll just put I put it on the moving parts. That's where that's how it was. So yeah. To me it seems too much, but it won't stop them opening with that force. There was a fair amount. I doubt it was added, so okay. I do not think that, that grease will affect those weights in any detrimental way they'll come out okay so we've got to put this plate back on and just we've got to put the base on first two screws held that on up this end like so and then once we've got that on, a little bit of oil on the pivot point, and then there's a spring loaded post. And that's it. Should be okay. Right, I'll get all this back together. You've got that going on to that little pivot point. And it should move nice and smooth. Of course, we've got to connect the diaphragm to it. So I'm just going to put it back together. I'm going to have to take it apart when, the, when we get a diaphragm. I might go and look in stores now in case I've got a diaphragm on another distributor that will work. Um, I don't know if the weights or the, 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 di the diameter of the bellows is different on different distributors. I'm not sure about that. I'll go and have a little hunt around, see what I've got. 
Okay, there we go. We've got our wheels. One on this side, on the left there, just lightly shot blasted. I didn't need them to go crazy on the shot blasting for the wheels. These are Papa's L spec wheels. Okay, lightly blasted. This side will get decent paint. This side gets a dusting, a light dusting of silver, like this one has just been done. And I've just used a non primer. It's called alloy wheel paint, but it works on steel. It doesn't need a primer. Dusted it in, and the idea with this is because Papa is just rough and ready rusty, I'm going to make these rusty. Now, you could just leave them outside, but I wouldn't get rust in the right places. Now, there's a chrome cap goes on there, so that's all that out, so that gets left. But I just want to create a slight shadowing of rust. And you can get rust effect paint and stuff, but what I thought I'd try, I've never done this before, just a piece of metal bar and the grinding wheel and grind the iron filings into it. Now I know from experience working in the workshop that anywhere where iron filings have been on the floor from grinding, then it's got wet. You've got, it's got a rusty colour and it's pretty hard to get off. So I'm going to cover these in iron filings. Then spray a bit of salt and vinegar over them. Salt and vinegar, yep, you heard it right. Mixed together in a mist. Leave them for a few days and just see what happens. Now I've done one and it's outside. This is the second one I'm doing. I'm going to do two at once and just see if it works. It should do because it's going to come off there as a black um, metal, uh, you know, black iron, iron shavings or iron, iron filings off the angle grinder. Then with the salt speeding it up, a bit of hydrogen peroxide, which I happen to have and some white vinegar in a spray bottle should accelerate the rusting process. And then what we're going to do is then two pack lacquer the finish in so that the, it's all held together. Then when the chrome center cap on, what you'll get is a nice shiny chrome center cap and a bit of a rustic look round, but silver showing through. And it should look quite good. So I just stick on these ear defenders, in I go, and that's all I'm going to do. Now, I might, I might have just, just said after a few days we'd come back to the wheels. But it's only a few minutes after you've just watched me add in the iron filings. That was the word I was looking for. Iron filings to this wheel and the salt spray. Spray liberally and embrace yourself. This one's been done about 15 minutes and already it's going a rusty colour. You can see here, it's dribbling down off that lip. So the iron filings have collected on the edge. And when I put the spray bottle on, spray liberally and brace yourself. It's come down and give it a kind of rusty look. And you could put the wheel that way to mimic the car being stood and the rust coming down as though it's been stood for years, or you could just lay it flat. But you can see that these patches here are now be going gocker. First a coppery colour, and then it's going to turn probably to a rusty colour. It's already starting to work. That wheel now doesn't look like it's ever been painted. If you can see that all right. I could always move it into the workshop. Just there. It might be overexposed on your... Uh, camera on my camera on your, on the video at home on your screens rather but it seems to have worked so this one should slowly start to turn as well we're in a bit of sunlight 
and to dry because I think it's a combination of it getting oxygen to it, the salt, the vinegar, the acid and the um, the air, the oxygen. So yeah, this is looking like a, already looking like an old wheel straight away and this was all mint. See that side, it's painted, that'll be lacquered up. We don't want it rusting on the inside, you see, we want a mint on the inside then weathered on the outside, which is exactly what's happened to this. This one in for paint then. Those ones outside are looking good. The iron filing idea is working. You may argue that this wheel's already got rust on it, but that's not what I want to do. Not the way I want to play. I like to, to do it this way so that there's bright areas and rusty areas rather than a completely faded wheel. It looks like something's happened. You can't quite tell which bits are new and which bits the old. In other words, it, it looks solid, but it's confusing because it looks solid and smooth, yet there's rust on it. As opposed to the wheels before they were shot blasted, heavily pitted. Here you can spray liberally because it's the centre cap. Well, on the outside doesn't matter, don't forget that it's getting a clear coat to pack. This is where you do need to put the paint. It doesn't necessarily have to be this spray paint. It could be just zinc primer, um, and then, a, then a, and a silver, any silver. But this is giving us quite a good coverage, this can. One can looks like it'll do all the wheels. And don't forget the clear lacquer in two pack, which will be put on at the body shop and then baked on. Should give you extra sealing as well. You don't want it rusting badly behind here. You want it so that if it was on the ramps at the MOT garage, and it will be in the MOT garage, that. They think, wow, well, okay, it's really clean under this car, deceptively so, and the wheels looking clean too. Just so that anything to do with safety looks like it's had time and money spent on it, yet cosmetically you've got the rat look. Okay, the wheels are looking good, and the finish is nicely weathered in. That's just uh, overnight. And we've used a combination of paints and chemicals. I'll talk you through those. These are the caps that will be going on. This was probably the best wheel out of them in terms of less corrosion. Um, pitting because it was painted black. <clears throat> but you wouldn't think that these wheels were all underneath that. It's all clean paint. The effect worked quite well, even under here where it's black. It's actually not, it's actually silver, it's just the effect that we've, we've got has worked pretty good. Smokey comes to check it out, here he comes, won't be a video without the smoke monster. Go on lad, go on my son, here you go, here you go. He always comes over when I'm talking. Come on. Keep away from them wheels, lad. There's chemicals on there, lad. Yes. Yes. There's chemicals on there, lad. Let's see, lad. So there you go, I'm quite pleased with that result. What I did, I finished off with some more silver to brighten the outer edges up so that they're all uniform and it gives it a bit of a clean versus patinaed look because we'd lost a bit of the shininess on the edges so we've done that. <clears throat> we used some salt water and white vinegar, a little bit of turmeric would you believe? 
just gave a bit of a, a it, that looks rusty when you sprinkle it in some acid there dangerous stuff water and then some silver paint to finish the edge so that you get all four matching because this was random and by painting the final edges all the same you bring all the wheels together as one then they've all got their own individual pattern of patina inside so these two side by side with the trims on you can see a bit of the turmeric there stains in you wouldn't think that is just fake rust that is not rust it's totally fake last wheel getting lacquered what I'll do is this is where the drip area is going to be if it's if it was stood so I'll fill that with lacquer plenty on flood the cowlings plenty on spray liberally and then in this hand the magic and then bang the magic and then boom that's all you got to do don't be shy boom and then just spray liberally and that is it you've got your rust you got your green you're locked in price locked <clears throat> that's the thing about doing patina work it's whilst it's an art it's more fun it's not as frustrating and you'll see that slowly patina up so all these wheels look like they've been half in under the water uh, yeah we've got the wheels done I don't know if we're in the same video now we should be the wheels are done, I'll take you to see those later. Wheels on Papa. But join me in the workshop for a new install of the 8-track series. And keen-eyed viewers will notice there's been some changes. Scan around. Swampy's in at the moment. Gary's had a bit of a, a tidy up. So we'll take you through everything. Come over this side and show you what's going on. So tons of space to move around and uh, yeah it's nice to have a bit of a tidy or nearly finished tidy the bench to do over there you saw us doing bits of the engine in this video i hope i've been doing a lot of filming and it sometimes happens like we've been to dave's yard we've been to drop the engine off we did a bit more on the wheels i don't know how much footage i've got whether it's all going to fit into this but I'll make it um, a two-parter, if, if you will. So part three of the eight-track split into two parts, including the engine and the trip out. So it's um, forgive me if it's uh, a little bit all over the show, but there's that much footage. But look, Swampy's in. A new workbench here. That's, that's nice. I'll bring you on the, on the other camera and we'll have a look at it. Uh, yeah, and new eight-tracks. And Papa's 8-track, I'm going to again bring you in to show you what I've been doing to improve it. We've learned a lot along the way about 8-tracks. I'm going to show you, share with you, show and share what we've learned. Remember David, remember Elvis. There's a special surprise as well coming up soon. Hopefully in this video I'll be able to include this special surprise and keep a new 8-track. When at Cortina City we get our teeth stuck into something we really do we really get stuck into it and it becomes an obsession and the eight track has become an obsession of mine as well as the cars they're still an obsession of course but it's all they all go together and i want to talk about eight track and exactly uh, what my feelings are about it and what i've been discovering bring you across to the bench I, as I said, I'll swap cameras because this wide-angle camera you're looking on now does fisheye it a bit and it's not as good for close-up work, so we'll switch to the, the Osmo action camera there and we'll point it that way to the bench. But um, let me 
bring this little clip, bring this camera forward. I'll keep you on, let it cut there. And here we go, you can have a little pan, pan around and see what's going on. So we've got another eight track in from eBay. Just, just took the screws out of it now. We've got to get that inspected. It's the same model. The um, came with a book, the 102S, and look, here's the book. Our bench is good, so we've saved money on a bench here. Now, Machine Mart um, didn't have the bench that I wanted in stock, and to be fair, this has probably ended up being a better idea and cheaper. Big Doug have some workbenches in. Again, for electronics, I don't think they really suit it. So I had a little look round, and you had prices ranging from £200 up to like £500 for a workbench, and some of them look quite flimsy, with that angle iron, slotted angle iron, cheap, um, cheap grade, thin gauge metal. I could imagine them wobbling about. This bad boy is a 1.8 metre piece of worktop from B&Q. That came in at £98 for the worktop. Two end caps, uh, aluminium end caps, they weren't much, uh, six quid each. Then two 400 base cabinets, kitchen base cabinets. And then just I just set them apart so I had enough room under here to move the legs about. Uh, six, six centimetres at either end in, uh, brought in. Then you can screw the whole lot to the wall, solid as a rock. And it was good fun to build. Guess what? All in, 209 quid for that. 209, wow. I drilled a hole in it here, sacrilege to put my work lamp, so that's in, that moves around, my magnifier and work lamp. We've got our soldering stations, our power supply, higher powered soldering iron there, we've got an air gun uh, with rework station as well, that's all in, there's the soldering iron, temperature controlled iron, some speakers here which I've got out of skip, and they were amplified ones for a PC, but I took the amplifier board out and hardwired straight to the speakers, Power supply for the radio at the back, some cleaning stuff, stuff to do the tapes, a bench, a um, multimeter there. I didn't know I had an 8-track. I've had this 8-track, but I never even knew I had it. We're going to be working on that, this radio com combo unit. Look at this, Princeton, Space Age, nice. That was in my garage, it's been in my garage for years. If you look on Swampy videos, you'll probably see it. Didn't know, I thought, I mean, I got an 8-track. So we'll be looking at that as a separate video. Uh, doing some MP3 work for people, I've got little Newt's radio in, that's down there. We've got this one in that I've been building as a backup radio, another MP3 conversion. That's had a nice uh, wooden effect done on it, and I've got a new plinth uh, fascia panel there, so that's getting an MP3 conversion. But I'm doing a different technique on this, I'll take you through that on a different video. We will be selling these for 300 quid. So refurbed and done for 300 with the MP3 arm with push button control. Different than the 150, 200 radios we just have an audio jack. This is all singing, all dancing. I'll talk you about that. We might need to come in a bit closer on the bench, but look at this lovely bench that we've got. I'm really pleased with it. Nice, and it's got shelving there for all the electrical parts and heat shrink packs and all the little boxes of goodies, of electrical goodies. This is all radio and electronics and circuit board related area. Got our eight tracks, of course, which we're working on. So on the bench at the moment is uh, Papa's set. And here's the, the new eBay one, which we don't know what's going on. We need to come in and have a look at that. So Papa's set is nearly finished. I've um, got to make sure there's no magnetism around here, no, that's okay. Papa's set's nearly done. Um, I did find some faults on it, which I'll talk you through now. So I'm just trying to update you, because I've done, there's a kind of three, four day gap between the last bit of footage that I did when I went to get the engine, or well, dropped the engine off, sorry. And that was all to do with building this and tidying up, so I'm trying to remember where I was up to. I think the first thing we should do is talk about eight tracks and what I've learned so far on this. So switching cameras now, we'll be right back. Now. So as I said, nice light there to work with. That's gonna be good. And this set, so I've just took the screws out the top. We're gonna to look inside it. We'll leave Papa's radio for now, it's nearly done. 
We're going to do a side by side comparison. Let me just compose myself, make sure we're, we're good for you at home. Side by side comparison. So, lid off, what will we have? I've waited and waited to do this. I've been dying to get into this, but I thought I'll wait till the, the camera's running to do it. Right, so the belt's intact on this. It's stuck. I can see that it's fused to the wheel. So I'm going to peel that belt off first. Yeah, the belt, I'm going to get, I've got some new belts on order. This might work for a bit. Stuck to it. Just there. Hmm. Let's have a look at that belt. Looks okay, actually. There's a little sticky patch on it, but belt off, flywheel's monkey. So what I'll do first, there's no point in trying to do this until you just do some basics. So it's Q-tips and contact cleaner. I'm using this high performance solvent. Bring you in now a bit closer. There you go, there you go, there you go. So I'll clean the flywheel edge. And I've learned how to service these now. I've learned a hell of a lot since you've been watching. Let's put the light over. I'm going to make sure that you can see good. I don't want that light in your face. I'm just trying to give you the best viewing experience. There's a lot of grime on this wheel. I'll just do that and get it off so you can see. It's grimed up, but we don't have to do that because we can pull the wheel. Let me get some long nose pliers. I usually like to have all the tools ready for you. I'm missing out the long nose pliers. There they are. Right, I want to show you something. Back on again. The flywheel. I didn't know this in the earlier in the earlier eight track films, but there's a pin here which you pull out. I'm going to get it now and show you on screen. And you pull this pin, and it that pin locks the flywheel now this one's a bit tight they've got probably an there it's gone they've got an adhesive on them a lot tight on them Whoa. i think that's enough to get the wheel out but what it does it releases the flywheel which i didn't know on earlier films this is this is only on the well I presume it's only on the 102s it's great because this set i got for I think it's £35 and it came with a book. And guess what? As well, look at this. Here's another thing that sort of spurred me to buy it. Someone's filled out the form, right? Uh, where are you? And it's a Ford Cortina GT to Mr. Brian Kenneth Reese. Look at that. I wonder if he's still around. So. The operating instructions and fitting instructions for this model, which I love, I can photocopy that because I've got plans to put one of these sets in each of the cars, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that later on. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm going to do that later on. Uh, and don't worry, I'm not getting rid of my MP3 setup. I'm adding to it. I'll tell you the reason why I want one of these in every car. I don't know if you want to start typing away on possible reasons. Why would I? Look at all that muck. Why would I suddenly want an MP3 player in every car, given that I've, sorry, a, an 8-track in every car, given that I've got MP3 set up in Alexa? Let's see what, just type some ideas. Right, okay, so clean the muck off that. We're going to scuff up the, um, scuff up the shaft, the capstan. I've just used 120 paper. I'm going to wrap it round. Now again, on the earlier vids you've watched, I didn't do this this way. I, I had it live running and I went in with a, a bud. That's because I didn't know how to take it apart. So what you want to do is clean that up. It doesn't want to be too shiny. It hasn't got, hasn't got a special coating on it. This pinches the tape, you see. So you want a bit of grip on it. And this gives it, well, it takes the rest of the muck off and just gives it... You could run that for a while, but that's okay. So lightly oil it. And here's the tower. I'm going to put it back in a minute into its bearing. 
here's the tower that, that holds it. I can bring this set right up to your screen to see this. This is an alloy tower, so it doesn't magnetise. Because if it was steel, it would magnetise up, so they've done it in alloy. There's a little bearing in, in there, and on, on the other 8-track, that bearing was loose and creating the warbling effect that we had. It had come out, come loose. So that's the tower, there's the pin at the bottom, so that supports the wheel. So we can put the wheel back into the tower, but we need to blow out the dust because it's completely filthy inside there. We need to get in, I don't know if the air compressor will do it. This needs blasting out before we do any more. Now I'm going to have to go and get the compressor to do it because the compressor is currently out of the garage. I haven't got a tin of compressor there, so I need to bring the compressor back in. So bear with me, we'll be right back and we're going to blow this out so it's clean inside. And then carry on putting it back together and checking everything on it. There's the heads to clean, the uh, changeover contacts for the swapping tapes, the pickups, they'll need cleaning. Okay, so it's cleaning this up. Initial first pass. Is there anything major off at first? You can always keep going at that. I've put some contact cleaner in. I'll show you how I did it. Contact cleaner into the three controls like this and slide them across. That stops crackling or helps prevent it and helps reduce it. Airline is on, we're going to blast out. There's a lot of muck in this, folks. Whoa, whoa! Broken up tapes and everything in here. Can you see that? All sorts of muck has come in. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, we're blasted out. I'm just going to clean the heads now. May as well clean the heads while we're on it. There's the heads. So easy to get to with the capstan wheel out or the flywheel out. Dead easy to get to. Plenty of muck coming off the heads. Not too bad, but always be mucky. Even after a few tape plays, they'll be mucky again. So may as well do that. And then you've got some contacts here, which look corroded actually. And there, those contacts there are for the tape to switch tracks. It's two sets of electrical contacts and they touch the metal strip which is on the tape reel. As the tape reel comes round, the little metal strip touches on these two contacts and creates an electrical circuit which pulls the track selector solenoid in here, which is sticking. You saw me cleaning that. We'll get that lubed up. Clean those. So you may as well just do all this before we even power it up because it's going to need doing anyway. It's not a fair test if you don't. Right, so everything's filthy. Contacts there for the 
up and down for when the cassette goes in it, it lifts that contact and the, the set powers up the flywheel can go back in i think and then we need to lightly oil the operating areas i've noticed this has broke loose there's some diodes there the reverse polarity stop you wiring it up the wrong way to the battery that's broke away and it looks like it's soldered on with a little bit of solder there so that solder's broke, so we need the hot iron, the high temperature soldered iron to get that because it's quite a bit of metal there. And bench iron won't do it probably. Um, head alignment, I got wrong on the last video, sorry about that. That is not the head alignment screw. And on my previous 8-track uh, 102S refurb video, I'm showing adjusting it there. You don't, that's locked down and the head adjustment is done here. And it's never had it done because the sticker is intact. Look, there's a screw just there. Okay, that's how you adjust the heads. You have to adjust the heads to make sure, sorry, you have to adjust the heads to make sure the tape plays correctly, that it sounds right and you don't get track bleed through because on the tape, as again we've explained, the tape is in four tracks, total of eight if you include left and right stereo. And um, if we look at this ABBA tape, you've got the width of the tape contains all four of the tracks laid side by side. The left and right of each track are actually split They're in a different location on, on the not next to each other. But that needs lining up. The head needs to pick up in just the right spot on that tape so that it plays the correct track. If you get this slightly out, you'll hear half of another track playing because they all run at the same time. All four tracks run at the same time. Heads cleaned. I think we can put the wheel back on with some very light oil. I'll put some on the end of my screwdriver. You don't really want too much. You really don't. The thing with oil is it's not to be seen, but it's to be there. That's a James May quote. So I'm just putting some in the bottom of this bottom bearing. Three and one's perfect for this. And then a little bit in the top bearing. And this wheel should spin very freely. You don't want to hear any sort of grinding or vibrations from it. It wants to be smooth. It's held in, as I said, by that little pin. So capstan and flywheel back in. That's okay. That's free. I'll probably bed in a bit better soon. Motor. Not much we can do with that. That's free as well. Motor capstan. Motor capstan. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's filthy as well. Yuck. Clean that up. Get a bit more on here. Oh, the cap's dead. Yeah, you can see why you have to be doing this. Right. That, that, and that. We can put the pin back. Pin just in the bottom. There it goes. And I think that pin has Loctite on it, so we're gonna to have to Loctite that up. So that'll vibrate out otherwise. This down here. That's our wheel in for now. The belt looks all right. We need to get the soldering iron on because this isn't good. And I need to feel the action of the solenoid itself, the track changing solenoid itself coming in a bit better for you on screen. So, bringing the light overhead as well. There you go. So, we're pulling in, and I can see that's not working. It's stuck. You can see how that should be changing tracks, and it's, it's sticky. The whole thing's sticky. See all that? It's all gummed up. It just doesn't want to go. 
that's not going to be changing tracks very well which part is seized i'm not sure something ah i can see it there's a tensioning spring at the bottom and that'll be binding so probably just three and one for this i don't think you're going to need to put grease it looks like it's got evidence of grease on it i don't know i'm a bit reluctant to use grease on this i don't know if they would have done i think probably because oil wouldn't have lasted i don't know i was never really 100 percent sure i'm almost sure that you'd never oil an armature uh, sleeve that bit oh well, this one is sticky though I'm going to in this case only lightly though can we get this to free up it's really sticky I can see another fault with it there's a little spring that helps select the track position and keep it in place and it's not lined up right so we've got to go in to the back so four screws out two of them were rusted up if you do get that and you're doing this you can't quite get a screw to go you can nip it with if you very tightly squeeze and then you can get it with side cuts lid off to get the underside some rust there motor then i think oh yeah there's that spring and it's damaged so we need to repair that I've got to take a spring off here that's going okay this copper spring is damaged i don't it looks deformed the wrong shape it's kind of catching on the cam stopping it changing tracks smoothly so i'll take that off it should come off there it is so that's damaged you can see it's distorted we need to see i don't know the correct shape so we're going to have to get the other eight track and copy it hopefully that one on the other eight tracks not damaged but that that wasn't in good shape there's the tower <clears throat> supports it there's the cam from that side if we pull the solenoid here it's still sticking so it's not that either there's the head adjuster this wheel does not want to go it's not quite right with it I can I can hear that squeak so there's something binding on that shaft you hear that now and again you hear a squeak it's getting easier though it's just not smooth that it'll, it'll definitely not work if that unless that's completely smooth so it's a shaft that goes just left to right there. I can't see it binding at this end. I know there's a switch contactor there, but it's not that. There's a sort of snail cam. Is it a snail cam on there? I can't tell. Yeah, it is. So there's a offset cam shape. It just doesn't want to go. It should be dead smooth. It just doesn't do it. I know that has to drop down. It's not quite working. It's that. Here's an interesting one. Apparently the same sets. Uh, this one is slightly different design. Look. Why the hell would you have that? Look at this, right? Look at that area. Then look at the same area on this one. It's got these slots in it. And this one's got two wheels. This one's only got one wheel. Do you know if this is a Mark II? I'll just bring you on the tripod there, control, so you can see both at the same time. Look at this. Two different models. Let's move these buds out of the way. They're done now. Interesting. A 102S. Let's have a look. This is the Bramble one, the original one. 
and then the same plate for the later model that we've just got in 5260402S. So base plates, model numbers the same, yet the chassis layout's different. As I said, why would you fit two rollers? Is it any is it to correct some faults? Although has it got the no, it is a diff, completely different chassis. And I think that second roller is to keep the tape more parallel. I did notice on this set you could wobble the tape. And a second roller probably helps with that. I don't know. I'm not so sure. But also the fixing screw for the this spring that we need to copy is also different. It only has one fixing screw and then a tag on it. It's got two holes, but it doesn't have a screw. It's got a tag, right? So if we put it there and we get the other one, you can see how bent this one is. I'm hoping that I didn't do that, you know. Anyway, I'll be able to fix this. There we go. It's well out. I think that was right. I don't think I okay, that's that's a success. Got those cloned. So that's repaired. I'm going to put that back in now and we're back to getting that cam to work and put the original set back together. Okay, let's put this back on. That one goes back in there where it belongs. And it didn't have a washer as well. Uh, it annoys me when there's differences. It's interesting, but it's also annoying. I like things to be all the same. And that's it. That one fits slightly different than the others. Than the other one. It just has one hole. I have to make sure this still works. Our original one, which was working, but this this needs working. Yeah, that's it. That's how it should work. Positive action. We'll go back to that later. Let's get back to this one. Put this back in. See if that helps. In we go. Bring a new slightly down for this. Just soldering this on. My iron will only just get this. Just. Actually not straight. There we go. It's got it. Just there. I can't let go yet because there's that much mass, it's going to take a while to. There. Right, that's fixed. Let me put some juice to this set and try and work that solenoid. I don't know what's causing it to bind, <clears throat> but it is binding bad. It's just not smooth. I've had a couple of hits, but. Something's sticking. There's nothing to look at that side. Oh, that worked. Oh, we got a couple. We're getting closer there. Let's let's speed the job up. I've connected while I was waiting for that iron. I got the juice ready. Let's move these plates. Move that set. And I made a little speaker loom. Oh, I've got enough room here. Yeah, I've got enough for that. So that is the original plug for this set. In it goes. It's got a positive on there. Right. I'll plug my power supply in, and we'll get. Let's get ready to go. Okay. Power supply is connected, and my finger on the other side is holding the. Um, We've got, we've got sound, by the way. I just heard it. I heard the amplifier, anyway. 
we've got my finger on the other side on that button that's the power up button when you push the tape in the contact and then I'm going to press it you should see right in the middle you see that copper the thing that we just repaired just there doing its job so it's working there's the head so for some reason manually doesn't do it but when you connect it this way it goes that's now working whether it's just finally freed itself up at the last minute I don't know but with power to the set we're waking up folks we are waking up yes we've got head action okay with that successfully changing tracks we're ready to put it back together belt can go on so i've got that lined up it's a different flywheel this than the other model as well so we've got two different flywheels that's on feels okay so everything's ready if i press this hang on we need to power it up we should get something now but i've not got a tape in it yet but i should get If we touch them together right so that's running and i can hear the amp so we've got a fighting chance here with this set folks looking good pc at the controls caught in the city what do we need to do next but we need to put a tape in it now if i demonstrate this to you with 99 percent of music it will copyright out and i'll lose my monetization and for tech videos i need monetization because that's the point so abba was gonna it'll, it'll blow it now I have got this tape, Mantav Mantavani Hollywood. And I'm hoping that it's so obscure that it won't pick it up, but it probably will. And if it does pick it up, I'm going to upload this, just this section of the video to YouTube before I put this out to you, and I'll check. If that happens, then you won't hear Mantavani. You're probably going to hear... I've got a spoken cassette, it's like a story tape, tra uh, not story tape, it's like a travel tape and that I'm sure that won't copyright, so you, you might hear a different audio uh, due to the copyright. It's a shame that I can't demonstrate it, but what I'll do, I'll do a sort of trailer video that doesn't matter about monetization and on the trailer video it'll have music like Bee Gees or whatever happen to pick, okay? So that'll be the reason why. So everything's ready. So you saw us fix the solenoid, you saw us fix that soldering join there. We've cleaned it out, cleaned the heads, cleaned everything that we can. It should work, but if you're going to do this, what I've learned is, so far on this journey, folks, you've been with me as we've done it, is that there's no point just putting a tape in off the shelf. This tape's coming off eBay, random, we don't know the condition of it or anything. It's best to just take the, the tape apart and service the cassette or the cart first before you put it in here because you can just end up with a false reading in other words if this tapes tight this is going to play slow so really you need to have a fighting chance that, you can, you, that your cart is okay and they're quite easy to service I've learned how to service these pretty quick and I'm going to take you through a quick 8 track tape service right now we'll move this frame off the bench this chassis off the bench and we're going to open up the cassette and do some very basic repairs to it. I might have already covered this briefly um, on that desktop uh, part of the section of the video earlier on, but we'll just we'll recap. So I'm going to pull the tape apart. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Each tape slightly different in the way they hold them together. A lot of them just have the same pins though. So I just push in and try and push these pins apart at the back. Some go easy, some don't. You've just got to get it just at the right point. And then they go. You can glue the tape back together. This doesn't always work. Be the, the notoriously just, we're losing the label on this as well going in at the edge if you're going at the edge you've got to watch that you don't slip in then wreck the tape anyway by slipping in you can put a blade in there and just to start you off again it doesn't always work 
it is tricky. I've had mixed results this, with this. But we've got to get this tape serviced before we put it in. Right, the Mantovini tape's on the desk. You've got to push your screwdriver into these little tags. Push in and clip out the little tags. I go along the edge then and just open it up with a the screwdriver there. The middle one's hard to get because they have the sticker over it. You have to break the sticker. I'm afraid there's no one around it. Always keep it that way up with the label at the top because the spool fits that way and bang, that's the best you can get. I mean, you've nothing to lose. That one broke. That one's okay. That one's okay. You can glue it back together. You've got no choice. You have to do that. So that's the tape. And the first thing, as we've discussed, and so has everybody else in the 8-track world, is your foam pad comes off, out for starters. Lightly dust out. When you dust out, you need to get. Sorry, I'm just off your screen. While you dust out, you mustn't let the tape unspool. So you've got to hold that. Right. So we dust it out. We've got to make one of these. They're dead easy to make. We've got to make one of them dead easy to make so the tape itself what can happen is it can tighten up on its spool this one seems okay we're just there like that it's a little bit tight this one isn't some are a really quite tight construction and these pinch rollers here these can go funny I've seen the rubber go on a few. That's mucky, so I'll clean that now. When you do that, get that out of the way. Let's see how much muck comes off this wheel. There it is. A little bit of cloth. I'm running out of clean cloth, then I'll get some more off the rope. So let's just see what it does. Cotton bud as well, reaching across. It's not too bad, this tape's probably not a lot of use. There is gunge on there, but it's not. But you're probably better off just doing it this way than with a cotton bud on these rollers. Spray it again. Spray it everywhere. Spray it again. That's okay, that roller. Now, <clears throat> whether this is right or wrong, but it's worked for me, is I do this with the oil. Because I've had these bind up on the post. So, I just put that there. And put it back on. I've, I've seen some tapes that have failed. And they've failed because the this roll is bound to the pin. And it's gr grated on it. And I found that the 3-in-1 oil helps nowhere else though there's a metal tape splice but it's buried in there what you have to do to get to that to replace the metal tape splice is wait till it comes up on on the cassette on the card so that really is done i will be a little bit adventurous and just do this on that middle one in case that binds now i have repaired a couple off camera and they've worked Hold on, I'm going to get a little tool just to thread that through. Slip at the end of a bud to grab this. Nothing metallic now because it's magnetic. Put that back in there, turn that. Put that back in there, turn that, he says. But in front of this. You need patience, especially if you're going to repair one of these tapes. You definitely need patience if you're going to fix one. I have attempted to re-spool one and it was going okay. Right, that's the best we can do with that. It's okay there. What we need to do now is just the foam pad. Take that out of the way. The foam pad's easy to do. Let's just scrape that off. Now, 
it's still grippy that you don't have to completely take that out because it is still grip very grippy i've noticed and then i've got scissors coming into your screen i've got the actual phone itself just draft exclude a phone peel it back place this strip onto it with that fuzzy side on go along the edge Cut it there. That don't need now. Cut that there and get another one out of that. So you do a few if you can. Put that back on its sticky plastic so you can reuse that piece of foam. No point wasting it. Then my special technique, my city technique. I've got this polythene tape and I'm hoping this will stand the test of time. Because you can't put the foam naked like that. It has to have another... And then let's reposition that's just a little bit it has to have a little bit, bit of a, uh, a soft uh, smooth edge to it to the foam back of the tape so that polythene tape is exactly the right width so it's stuck that side i'll show you what i mean in a sec cut it again and cut the other side hang on did that wrong Put that side, that's that, and it's got the smooth edge on it on that side. So now you have to have a little bit of clearance at each end, so I'll just knock a bit off the end. And then this goes back into there. It's just for the heads to push against the tape. It pinches in the middle. Show you in a sec. Like that, that's it. So that's all together. New foam and a, a new uh, rubbing strip, <clears throat> if you will. Then goes together this this way. You guide the first end in with that shaft in through the pinch roll. Check your tape's clear. It should snap in. Boom, boom, good to go. Now that's coming off. We need some tape on there before we put it in the thing. Will Mantavani, Mantavani play? Will it copyright or will it even play at all? I'm about to find out. Okay, I've double-sided taped that so that this, the label can stick down. It seems a shame to waste that getting caught and ripped because it's a good that's actually in good order they normally all crinkle up anyway mantavani's put back together a quick check that we're okay we are so we're getting close now to testing this out we may as well stay on in it goes now i know the amp was working i heard it buzzing we know that the the, uh, the solenoid works so really that's it that won't catch it should just go in uh, are we actually live? No, we need the power supply on. Reaching across to the power supply because it's noisy. I don't have it running. Okay, just test that we've got power. Nope, there's earth it needs to be hooked on the earth to the chassis. Press that. Whoops. Press that. Right, so that's right. So here we go. Volume down at first. Get in. We're on track for it. Start track one. Okay, here we go. Nothing yet, is it at the beginning of the tape? We don't know. Yes, there's music. We're in. That's sounding okay initially. And I can't really test it with well-known tracks. Let's go to track two. We've got Zorba the Greek. Now, isn't that the one from Lockstock? That'd be a good one to do it.
I'm sure I tried to use that on one of my early Ruby or Bramble videos as part of a fun bit of a trailer. And it didn't copyright. I don't know. I don't know. Because there's so many versions of it. It's an old song. Good stereo separation. That sounds really sharp, actually. Let's bring it up to you, we should be able to. That's hooked on the mat. You couldn't if you you couldn't if you tried hook that onto the mat. Wow. It caught the corner of the chassis into the handle of the cutting mat. Crazy. So this sets a work, yeah. Between this city, we got we got a special surprise. We got a 1970s surprise. But you get a clue on there what's coming up. Boxes of eight tracks. And I mean, and I mean, boxes of them. Just check out that cornucopia. Check out that jamboree. Check out that potpourri. We've gone totally 70s.